part of our doctor's service could be under too much pressure. It's just four weeks since Harmony took over in Suffolk from Take Care Now. It was the Easter weekend and their switchboard was swamped with calls and for the first two days there weren't enough doctors on duty. There were also long delays at one clinic in Ipswich. Today, some staff told Look East they're worried some patients could be left waiting again. The first big test for Harmony was Easter bank holiday and there were problems. Some of the Artevals users said they were left waiting for hours. The chief executive apologised. I will apologise for what went on on the Friday and Saturday in Ipswich. It wasn't, wasn't good and we rectified it as soon as possible. Mr. Gardner, so apologies you. to all the patients who suffered from that. Thank you. The next big test is this bank holiday weekend, but the employees we've spoken to off camera say they still have concerns. They say when Harmony is inundated with calls, it simply can't cope. They may have underestimated the number of staff that are required. It's apparent that there are less doctors now who are prepared to work for whatever reason and it's becoming harder uh, to find staff who are actually trained to do the out of hours work. Harmony has services in Essex and Norfolk as well as Suffolk. Scrutiny of its out of hours service has been intense. Well of course in the circumstances where Take Care Now uh, lost the contract I really would have thought that the primary care trust in Suffolk would have taken really all possible steps to ensure that the new provider of care would have the IT systems and the staffing available so that patients would feel confident in the service being provided. Harmony has told Look East that it's fully prepared for the long weekend. Maria Veronese, BBC Look East. Well, late this afternoon I spoke to Lynn Wigans, the Director of Patient Safety and Clinical Quality at NHS Suffolk, and I asked her if she was confident about the weekend. It will be a good standard of care and um, we've sought assurance from them that they will have um, additional staff and resources this weekend in line with the bank holiday needs. So if on Tuesday morning we discover that this bank holiday is as bad as it was at the last bank holiday, you will come and tell us that you got it wrong, will you? Um, we work in partnership with Harmony, we commission services from Harmony and like all of our providers we expect high standards of care. We believe they will be delivering good care this weekend and if that weren't to be the case, which I don't believe it will be, we will of course be responding to that immediately. Uh, when you decided to change from the previous out of hours provider to Harmony, did you expect this kind of problem? What happened at that time was that the, all organisations wishing to tender for that work were reviewed and uh, we believe that Harmony came up with the best offer in terms of safe and effective care for patients in Suffolk. So can you give us some guarantees this evening? There will be enough doctors, there will be enough people answering the telephone and people won't have to wait for long times to either hear from a doctor or see a doctor. Right. I I, I'm giving you an assurance that on, on behalf of NHS Suffolk we believe that that service will be a good service this weekend and if there were any situations where the, the, the provider that we were working with weren't delivering what we expected them to achieve we would work swiftly and immediately to ensure that they do. And if there are any problems you'll come back and talk to us on Tuesday? Um, I would be very happy to talk to you again Stuart. Lynn Wigans, thank you very much. Well, Harmony has issued a statement. They say we're confident we'll have an infrastructure in place to provide a first-rate service over the bank holiday weekend. They've also promised to talk to Look East on Tuesday to see how it's gone. Well, it's the bank holiday for most of us, but for the politicians, of course, there'll be no rest this weekend. With just five full days of campaigning left, a lot of the attention is focused on the all-important marginal seats, and one of them in particular. Here's our political correspondent, Andrew Sinclair. Yes, we've had several emails from viewers in parts of Suffolk and Essex saying, election? What election? We've had very few leaflets through the door and no one's been round to see us. Well, this has been a tale of two elections because the parties are concentrating all their efforts in the marginal seats. And have a look at this. We've been keeping a tally of all the big visits uh, to our region. And that shows you really what really matters to the main parties. The M1 corridor, Cambridge, Norwich, the East Coast. And one of the most visited seats in our region... 
Luton South. It was won by Margaret Moran. It's been at the centre of the expenses scandal. Its main industry faces closure. And it's a bellwether seat, which means it always returns an MP from the governing party. Our Luton reporter, Nikki Jenkins, has been getting a unique perspective on the town. Luton is said to have the highest percentage of taxi drivers of anywhere in the country. Now where are we going to? So we thought we'd take a cabbie's eye view of the town. Well, I've lived in all my life most of it, so if I didn't like it, I'd have moved out by now. So it's not that bad. Well, historically, Luton was a manufacturing town, but there's precious little of that remains now. In fact, the closure of the Vauxhall car plant in 2002 is just one of the reasons why there are so many taxi drivers. And beyond 2013, the future of the van plant remains in doubt too. I've had the, the leaflets come through, so, you know, from Labour, Conservatives and, and uh, the Liberal Democrats. There's nothing saying about, generally, about manufacturing in, this, uh, in the town. From up here, you can see the huge scar where the Vauxhall car plant used to be. It seems a world away from the blue chip companies that are moving in over here. Nowadays, the airport and the council are the town's largest employers, and that's where we're off to now. Look, we've never had a crane index, as I call it, and yet... Right in the middle of a recession, we've got five tower cranes up in Luton. And I've described several times Luton over the last seven or eight years has been pushing a railway carriage uphill. And um, once we get it over the brow of that hill, it will pick up its own momentum, Luton's economy. And we're just nearly there at the moment. Billions have been invested, but Scott, for one, is failing to see the benefits. So when it's all done, you know, Luton will grow. You know, it's, it, it will be, it, but it's still got a bad reputation, hasn't it? Every time it's on the telly, it's always negative, isn't it? Which bits don't you like? You know, it's just, to me, it's just too full of too many foreigners. Simple as that. Immigration is a big issue. In fact, the large Muslim population could have a political impact all of their own. But the religion shouldn't be a problem. As a human being, you need everything. You need education, you need to have a job. So the issues for you are the same as for anyone? Oh yes, absolutely. You want to go to Alexander now? Isn't it? Yeah, Alexander Avenue. Well, Lynn South has voted for the winning party in every general election since 1951, but the expenses shenanigans may have put paid to that. Last stop on our journey, Margaret Moran's old place, just sold. And there's plenty who'd like to move into her place in the Commons too. But with 12 candidates standing, this could turn out to be one of the most hotly contested seats in the country. Nikki Jenkins, BBC The East, in Luton. And there's a special televised debate this weekend involving some of the candidates from Luton South. It's on The Politics Show this Sunday at the earlier time of 11 o'clock here on BBC One. Thanks, Andrew. Well, still to come tonight, one of your big questions. What happens to those people who lost thousands of pounds to equitable life? And...